How you doing? Great, great. Uh, thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Of course. I'm a big fan. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I have been since Powder. Oh, wow. Yeah, they, they, I love that movie. I don't know why, but it's something about it. It's great. Well, I'm proud of that movie, too. I mean, that's that's one of my my proudest moments, re re really. It is out of, out of a career, I don't know, you know, a couple hundred projects. That's in my top three. Oh, it's, it's a fantastic movie. Thank really you. Is. And you've, I mean, you've had so many great roles. I mean, the boondock sakes, come on. I mean, really. <laughs> Those, that was those, one of the funnest to make. Those movies are fantastic. They're so entertaining. Thank you. Um, especially like the fight scene in the first one where like the toilet gets broke. That was great. Well, if a Russian steals your brother, that's what you do. You rip a toilet out of the ground. I gotcha. Well, you got to do what you got to do, you know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Right, even, in, and I'm going to be honest with you, it broke my heart to see you die in the boys. That was rough. That was brutal. Yeah, dude split my head open. What are you going to do? You know, but he was on the juice, so you know. Yeah. He was on the juice. I was not juicing. I was all 100% natty, and homeboy was on the juice. That's the only way he took gunpowder. That is, uh, do you have fun filming that one? You know, I, I did have a good time, but we shot it during COVID. So I didn't get to meet anybody. We didn't really get to chit chat. I, it, I, I stayed sequestered and I, I was for whatever reason, an essential worker. Um, you know, in the height of the pandemic, we're considered essential and we get to go and make a movie, um, which was just bizarre. You know, you, you couldn't go surfing, but you can, I don't know. And uh, so, I mean, I would have loved to, you know, I don't get an opportunity to do, you know, big, hugely successful shows like that. So I would have loved to have met people and, you know, uh, and I, I mean, I had a wonderful time. You know, like I said, I, I, I don't get a lot of opportunity to do stuff like that. But uh, it was an odd uh, way to shoot, um, you know, without getting to know anybody and, uh, you know, everybody sequestered on their own it was uh i wish we could do it all over again you just show up and get your belt whooping left i mean that's that didn't sound like much fun <laughs> yeah exactly all right now you're playing a different kind of character in your new movie nefarious tell me about nefarious well <clears throat> um it's a script that uh, came from Chuck and Carrie, um, Carrie Solomon, Chuck Conselman. And I worked with them in 2004 on a film called The Insatiable. And I liked them from day one. And uh, whenever we finished that movie, I told them uh, jokingly, I said, I would do a Fruit Loops commercial with y'all. And about a year and a half ago, they called me and they said, Flannery, we got a Fruit Loops commercial. And I, uh, <laughs> I said, uh, all right, I'm in. And they said, you know, we want to send you the script. Let me know what you think. And I, I read it and I was all in, you know, it's a, uh, it's an opportunity to, to do a character that uh, you don't get an opportunity to play that often. And realistically roles like that are why you move to LA to become an actor, you know, out of a, a, you know, 300 films. If you're lucky, you get one, you know, and like we were talking about earlier, I got a couple, you know, powder was one of them. That's why you move out to LA, powder, you know, um, and certainly nefarious is as well. So uh, um, I, 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 I don't, uh, I don't shy away from those opportunities. Right, right. And I mean, it's you're playing basically playing two different roles. Is that difficult to do? Um. Yes and no. Um, you know, I, I only know one way of acting. Um, I don't have an, an intricate process that I go through. Um, my research takes place between fade in and fade out, page one and the end. And uh, if it's well written, I believe it. I believe 
in these characters. And if you really believe something is happening, your body will react on its own. And uh, I think the script was so well written that uh, it doesn't require much preparation, much forethought, much, it, 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 the words are so perfectly structured that it is an instruction manual on how to deliver a character, even if it is multifaceted, like, uh, you know, the difference between Nefarious and Edward. I mean, you know, I, I thought about it. I made decisions. I thought about what would this guy look like? What would he, what would his mannerisms be? What, what, what would he sound like? And I just made those decisions and I, I just did it, you know, and I, 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 that's the only way I know how to do it. I did the same thing with powder. I just read the script and I thought, this is what he sounds like. This is what he looks like. It, it's coming from this emotional location. That's all. That's all I know how to do. I, I don't know a more complex way to do it. And ho hopefully, hopefully, you know, people will, will will believe in the character. Right, and you did very well. They were they were both great characters, and I love that there was a clear divide between them. You could tell when one was one and the other the other. And that's that's a great thing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, how did you kind of uh, decide to to make that break, that separation? I'm sorry, you you broke up. Could you say that again? I said, um, how did you kind of come across the way you would divide the two characters? Well, the way the characters are divided are in the script. I mean, it's it's written when he says, let me talk to, I mean, the characters are separated. Now, as an actor, you have to have the, have the ability to switch back and forth instantaneously. But uh, I, I, um, I, I, it wasn't random chance. I mean, like I said, I, I'm not I'm not stroking Chuck and Carrie when I say they are two of the best screenwriters in the city of Los Angeles. Um, and that's bar none. That's taking every screenwriter into account. And I, I've read every great script out there. It's won Academy Awards. And they are two top shelf writers. I'll tell you, this movie could not have been written by any other writers. But it could have, Nefarious could have been played by a handful of other actors. You know, some, some far better probably. But uh, it really does start with the writing. And their writing is beyond reproach. I, I, I don't want to change a syllable in their scripts. That's how good they are. And I, I, I think that at my core, it's, that's, that's my, my opinion. But uh, everything that I've read of theirs is sound, 100% sound. Well, you, the script did well, the movie did well, you did well. I, I felt so sorry for Edward, God Almighty. When you would change into him, it was just, oh, you know, tugged at your heart. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Because, he, you know, he just, he's, he's a sad, sad character. And it's terrible. <laughs> How was it making a film that is mainly in just one room? How was that? Because, you know, you don't get to, to move to other sets to, you know, do things. It's, you're, you're trapped right there. What's that like? Well, you know, it, it's, it's, a uh, it's an actor's dream. You know, I, I, I really like heavy lifting. You know, there's not a lot of, uh, cinematography to, to back you up. There's not an action sequence. There's no big explosions. Um, it's, uh, it's just two faces talking. And I, I got to say, it, it would have been incredibly difficult and painful if I would have had to do it with anybody other than Jordan Belfi. I mean, I thought he was stellar in his character. And, you know, if it, if it, if it is a, a, a two-person dance, you know, both people have to be wary of the other person's feet to not step on them. Um, and to conversely be watching out for them to step on you. It, it's a uh, man. I, I had a, I had an outstanding dance partner 
And I, you know, I hope I, I held up my end of the bargain, you know, but, but it's, it's, I like the fact that there is no parachute. You know, I like the fact that there is no safety net. I, I relish those opportunities. I mean, they are opportunities and maybe some people will say, well, but Flanner, you fell on your face, but uh, I love those opportunities. I love where, all right, here it is. It's just you see if you can pull it off, you know, and I, you know, the jury will be out, I guess it you know, comes out on Friday. So people I'm sure will let me know if I tripped and face planted, but uh, uh, I, I, I really enjoy those opportunities. Well, I, I watched it and I enjoyed it very much. Well, thank you. I thought it, thought it was great in the way that things were approached and the, the delicate balance between good and evil. And, you know, the, the fact that this poor guy is in this really, really shitty situation. And, you know, I even like the fact, you know, like in Fairy Amis, because he was so, I don't know, smooth, kind of. I don't know how to explain it. So it was, a, it, it turned out very well. I appreciate it. Now there is a scene where you are sitting in a chair. Was that part difficult? Say that one more time. For some reason, it's a, you know. I was trying not to to put out a spoiler, but this won't come out until the movie's released, so I don't think it's going to matter. Um, the scenes when you're in the electric chair. Was that kind of an emotional thing? Because I mean, that's that's a scary thought. Well, I mean, the whole the whole movie is an emotional roller coaster. It's uh, you know, um, uh, the, 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 there's really not an aspect of the film that's not emotional. It's uh, you know, that character is he's you know the depravity of man, and the 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 collective empathetic nature of man you know it's uh and i the, 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 there's you know you know i, I do i i think uh you know the the job of acting is i'm grateful to not have to work i i, I don't consider it work um but yes it is every every role has a a a, a pretty punctuated emotional aspect and this you know kind of takes a first first or at least the second place it's uh and that 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 scene certainly was no different you know well when you have to react to it while you're in the chair what exactly were you you know going for what did anything inspire you to have that reaction because i imagine it would be a very physical thing if you saw it, it, it probably looked like a very physical thing. Um, and, and it was, uh, you know, um, I, I, I don't want to give any spoilers either, but, uh, I'll let uh, the audience, um, it, 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 it's probably the most physical aspect of the film. You know, the, the rest of the film is very, very cerebral. Um, but that aspect ha had a physicality that, uh, it was unparalleled in the rest of the film. Right, right. Well, did it, um, you know, the whole situation, did it affect you emotionally? No, you know, I, I'm, I, I, I don't want to, I'm not one of those actors that, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I take this character home with me. No, I don't. I am who I am at my core. When they say cut, I'm Sean Flannery. Um, I try to, my best to be someone else on screen. But even in the middle of a scene, I know who I am. Right. I, I, I mean, I, I was, my, my, my sons on, on m most of the weekends, they had wrestling tournaments. So I was FaceTiming with my boys. So right before action, I was watching the FaceTime. I would have somebody hold the phone, action, blah, 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 cut. Oh, he just got a pen. But that's me. You know, I, 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 I don't lose myself in a character. I don't require that people call me by the character's name. I don't take any baggage. I don't, I'm not, I don't have any emotional scars. I'm very well aware that it is make-believe and I'm pretending. 
Um, I think I'm a fairly decent pretender. Um, and I don't want to take away any credibility. I think people make up stories like that to make it seem harder or to make it seem like I really had to go to a dark place and I left part of my soul to give you this role. The truth is, no, I didn't. I, I didn't leave a part of my soul. I am who I am. Um, it, it's it's easier than any day I was changing the deep fat fryer at Church's Fried Chicken. Um, you know, we had... We had a craft service that would fix you any meal you wanted. Um, and and uh, uh, it, it is an art. You know, it, it's it's when I say there's heavy lifting in a role like this, I mean, you know, it, it, it requires you to be at the best of your craft. But there is no literal heavy lifting at all. It's uh, I didn't take any of it home with me. I left it all out there. I left it on the set. You know, I don't want any part of that character in my life. And he's forbidden for entering my real life. Right. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. What do you hope that fans take away from the film? You know, like any film, I don't hope anybody takes anything away from it. Um, I hope they enjoy it. I hope it, uh, uh, I hope they talk about it. You know, some of my favorite films are when me and my wife would talk about a movie. You know, it, it, it moved us so much. We had questions. We had questions about scenes. What would have you have done in this situation? Oh, my God, I think they should have made the situation more like this. You know, I hope people enjoy it. I hope it spurs thought. Um, um, and I, 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 I hope it causes introspection. Um, um, all of the above, like every film. You know, you take every scene that you witness and you're like, how could I use that in my life? How could I steer my life away from that? You know, and it's, it's like any story. I mean, you know, I, I think we're all a collective of the the experiences that we have and the, the scenes that we've seen unfold, whether they're in real life or in a movie. Um, and you adjust your life accordingly. I mean, I, th I think it's like any other film. I mean, I, I hope people see it. I hope people dig it. And uh, I hope it makes their life better. Awesome. Okay, since you brought up movies, I have to ask, what's your favorite horror movie? You know, I I don't specifically love horror for horror's sake. I love good movies. Um, for example, my favorite horror movies are uh, Damien the Omen, but my absolute favorite horror movie really has no horror in it at all. And it's when a stranger calls. There is no blood. There is no guts. It's just a very psychological, tr psychologically traumatic experience hearing all of these potentialities that may happen. But really, there was no horror. No one ever got stabbed. No one ever, you know, but it's when a stranger calls. Um, you know, another one of my th th that scared me the most was 2001 A Space Odyssey. You know, when HAL 9000 tries to take over the ship. And that really scared me at the time when I was watching that. So, you know, um, I, outside of the genre, things that scare me sometimes aren't even considered horror movies. Right. All right. I got to say, I'm, I'm the same way. My favorite is Jaws. And that would have been right up there with mine as well. I mean, that was, I didn't want to go in the water after that. Oh, I see that. I wanted to. It drove me to want to go to the beach and go into the water. So I'm I'm weird. <laughs> well, I, I'm I'm a surfer. It didn't stop me from going in. But every time I paddled out, I was uh, you know, it, was, it had an effect on me, right? And it's a movie, but it has an effect on you. it. Makes you consider some purely fictional scene and adjust your life accordingly. It adjust adjusted my life. Right, and it did bring a lot of attention to to sharks. Um, so you have also have another movie coming out. I don't know if this already came out. Um, the Weapon? Oh, uh, yes. You know, The Weapon. People, I, I, I had a cameo in that movie. And, and yeah, and, and people are, it's, it's uh, I had, I, I had a tiny cameo in the film. I haven't even seen it. Um, but, uh, uh, I, 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 have you seen it? Not yet. I haven't. I'm sorry. Not yet. I haven't. Okay. 
Yeah, I haven't even seen it, but I had a cameo, but I had people reaching out to me and, and talking as if it, it was my movie. And it, it, it's, 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 I had a, it's a tiny little, tiny little bit player in the film. Right. I got it. So if you had to give some advice to someone looking to get into the entertainment industry, what would you tell them? Uh, be good. What do I mean by that? Uh, have somebody other than your mom and your dad tell you you're good. Everybody's watching American Idol and there's a, a girl or a boy that can't sing to save their life. And then it cuts to their mother going, oh, my God, she sings like a nightingale. You're like, <laughs> no, baby, she doesn't. She can't carry a tune. Um, so be good. Be very objective about whatever it is that you're going to go sell. Number two, move to L.A. If you're good and you are in L.A., you will be able to get any student film that you audition for. There's three places you need to get the student films for. AFI, American Film Institute, USC, and UCLA. Those are the three where the student films are the future George Lucas's, Steven Spielberg's. That's the future that are coming out of those three schools. Now, if you're good and you're in LA and you have done multiple student films, you will be able to edit together an amazing demo reel. If you're good, if you're in LA, you have a bunch of student films under your belt and you have an amazing demo reel, you will be able to get a very good agent. If you're good, you're in LA with a bunch of student films under your belt and a killer demo reel and a killer agent, 100% you will work one time. If you're a good person and you're a pleasure to be around, you will have a career. It's as simple as that. Wow, that's great advice and I appreciate you uh, sharing it with our readers. Um, if you can make a dream movie, like just like, the one you've always wanted to, what would it be? Um, it would be that, Jane 2. It's a book I wrote, came out in 2015, and I'm in the process of uh, uh, setting that up. So the dream film of mine project would be that book. It's called Jane 2. Well, awesome. I really hope we get to see it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I believe that is time. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to 